Today, we're going to be building a knife sheath for the Drop Point Tactical. Now, if you haven't had a chance to build the Drop Point Tactical yet, go to the video right here and it'll teach you how to do it. In the meantime, as I said, today's sheath is going to be for this knife. We're going to be making it out of Kydex and it will be in the pattern of Cryptic Banshee Micro. So this is a great pattern for a knife sheath as it's a lot smaller than the standard pattern. We're going to be using soft loops. These soft loops today are olive drab. They go along great with that banshee. And we're using pull the dot snaps along with it. So follow along as we build a knife sheath for the drop point tactical. All right, so first we're going to go ahead and tape up our blade here. This will just allow us to create a little bit of space between the actual blade itself and the material when we form around it. Now, this is a friction style sheath, so what this does is it still allows a nice tight fit, but it's not so tight that you're just fighting to get your knife in and out of the sheath. And then we're just going to trim the excess tape off the edges because what we really want here is nice smooth tape. We don't want any kind of air bubbles or any wrinkles because those will show up in your finished sheet. All right, now we're gonna take our Cryptek here. We're gonna decide which part of the pattern we want on our sheath. And then we're just gonna lay the knife on there to give ourselves a general idea of how much overhang that we want to be able to work with. Remember to be on the safe side, more is better. Um, you can always, as you get more experience, use a little bit less material. Uh, but when you're first starting, it's always better to use a little bit more than less because that just gives you more room to work with. Now we're gonna take our straight edge, score the front side of the kydex, and we'll just snap it off. And then we'll do the same thing for our other one. All right, now we're gonna go to our oven and we're just gonna heat it. Somewhere in the general vicinity of 350 degrees, there's a pretty big variation. Uh, you can see there that it started to curl up. Curl up is not ready. Curl up means it, it's starting to heat, uh, but what you're gonna look for is for that curl to kind of lay back down flat, and if you have it hanging over the edge of that rack, you'll see it drop down a little bit. But uh, when we take it out, you'll see it droop fairly well, and that's really what you're looking for. As you can see, it folds nice and easy and it's really floppy. 
So there's a pretty wide range of temperatures that you can use this. You just want to make sure, I guess floppy is a good term for it. That's about how you want it. We're just going to put it inside of our press here after we've wrapped it around our blade. While we're waiting on our Kydex to cool down, I want to tell you a little bit about soft loops. So for years, you had an option in colors. You could get black, you could get black, or you could get black. Well, as you can see, today we're using all of drab. And in fact, at holstersmith.com, we have 15 different colors of soft loops. They're all three quarter inches wide, and they are pre-cut with three holes so that you can use them for one and a half, one seven five, or two inch belts, just like the regular black soft loops are. So why don't you head on over to Holstersmith today, just click this link right here, and it will take you directly to them and you can see all the colors that we've got. Now, let's get back and see if the Kydex has cooled off yet. One thing important that you'll note here is that we wrapped around from the back side of the blade. We don't wrap the sharp edge uh, because that sharp edge is going to have that slight gap in it where the two pieces come together. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have a hard time, one, getting the blade in and out, and two, you're going to damage your sheet. So now what we're going to do here is we're going to line up where we want to put our snaps. You want to make sure that you get them nice and even. You can put them whatever distance apart that you'd like, just so that they're close enough together that, that you're not having to wrap them around your body on a belt, right? If you're going to carry it horizontally on a belt, um, or if you're hooking it into some type of strap system like a molly or something like that uh, on a backpack. And then just mark where you want your other holes for your eyelets. And then you're just, this part is preference. You're just kind of drawing out where you want to get rid of the excess kydex. Remember, leave plenty of room for those eyelets. What you don't want to do is, is put it too close. And then when you drill the hole for your eyelet, your eyelet hangs over the edge of your sheet. So now that we've drawn roughly what we want, going to head on over here to our drill press. We're going to go ahead and drill our holes in. Now we're just going to go and we're going to cut away that excess material. We're going to try and stay on the line that we drew or outside of it. We don't want to go to the inside of it. And note that this shape and even the eyelet placement to a degree uh, is a matter of personal preference. You may want more eyelets than what we're using. Um, you may want your eyelets straight down one side and then an angle at the bottom. Uh, a lot of times what people will do is they just kind of run the eyelet sort of along the same line as the edge of the blade just for aesthetics. But again, that's all a matter of personal preference. All right, now let's head over and set our eyelets.
And then we're just going to head to our sander grinder and we're going to go ahead and kind of get our final shape of our sheath here. Remember, don't push down too hard. Uh, this is plastic and it will, I mean, just chew right through it with that belt. So just go light and easy. Take your time. And once you're happy with the shape, then you'll just go in and kind of do some final polishing here. You'll polish it to your liking. And one thing that you can do after that, although we don't show it here, uh, is you can just take it uh, and you can rinse it out in some water, just a little tub of water, uh, or take you a uh, something from your air compressor uh, with a blower tip and just kind of blow any chips or pieces out of the inside, just from where you were drilling and and uh, polishing and everything. Something may have gotten down in there, and then just let it dry good. So next you just come over and decide which one of those holes that you were going to put your IWB on. Now what we're going to do here is we're just going to put our posts in our IWB and then we're going to put the snap, what's called the stud, on the other side and put a screw through it and that'll hold the IWB on one side and allow the IWB to wrap all the way around the sheet. And then we'll just repeat that for our second. Well, we certainly hope that you've enjoyed watching this video as much as we've enjoyed making it. We really love making these DIY videos for everybody out there. If you liked it, please take the time to click like. And also, if you want to make sure and get everything that you need to build this sheet, all you got to do is click the link right here. It'll take you directly to Holster Smith. Also, if you did enjoy this, remember, every week we're coming out with new and exciting content. All you got to do is click the subscribe button and also click to be notified. That way you'll know when the next latest and greatest video is coming out. Thanks again for stopping by and I hope to see you soon.